good evening, everybody, and we'll go ahead and call us to order at 4 o'clock for the regular board meeting of the Vallecitos Water District Board of Directors. Uh, can we go ahead and get a roll call? We need to do a pledge. Oh, a pledge, sorry. Um, Director Elathop, you lead us in the pledge. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Diane, now can you lead us in a roll call, please? Director Here. 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 I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda with one one change. Item 2.3 has been uh, deleted from the agenda as the Arts Council will not be joining us tonight for their presentation. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Okay, oral communications. I have one speaker slip. Um, Michael, you want to come on up? Um, introduction first. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to the old Yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah, we got we got the uh, cheat sheet messed up for him. Okay. Oh. Ms. Anderson, you want <laughs> to come up and uh, introduce Daniel? Daniel Preto joined the district just two days ago, October 5th, as the application specialist one. This is a new position that was approved in this year's budget. Daniel comes from Advanced Diabetes Supply, where he did computer development work for the last four years. And in his free time, he enjoys developing mobile applications, because that's a lot of fun, <laughs> fishing, and spending time with family. Great. All right, Daniel. Welcome. Thank you. I, I, I have to tell you, Daniel, I saw the city manager here, and I thought maybe we stole you from the city, and we were going to be getting grief from the city manager. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hey, 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 you're hey, out hey, here hey, for hey. a reason. You're out here for a reason. <laughs> Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, board, Daniel. <clears throat> Thank you. And we have one more presentation. If I can call up Chris Daring. So, if you want to come on down, please. Sure. Come on up, Chris. So, Chris is a wastewater plant operator. One, he's been with the district just a little over a year. Uh, so today, he's getting his wastewater treatment plant grade two certificate issued by the state uh, on September 14th. To give you a little background when you know you've been around too long uh, when letters start coming back that you wrote and signed 20 30 years ago <laughs> i worked with his dad probably for 25 28 years now um, wow. chris wasn't even around when steve and i first started working together for luke dudek uh, way back when so welcome aboard well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. congratulations Thanks, Chris. Okay, everybody can leave. <laughs> okay, we should have you back on track now, Mike. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we left a couple of spots off. Now we're at Oracle Community. Okay, Michael, are you ready? Mike Hunsaker, 115 Equestrian Court, San Marcos. I've talked a little bit before about the water usage factors in the presentation that the engineer did based on zoning densities. I mentioned one of the problems is the uh, not all zoning reflects the true amount of buildings that are on a property. Some of them may be empty, and some of them may be getting the density bonuses. The density bonuses do not appear in these calculations, and they should apply for anything that goes in the future. Uh, there, I found, however, that there is an additional, even larger variance that is allowed, and that is in transit villages. We are in the midst of doing some major development, so-called smart growth, and the transit villages are there. We have Palomar Station Apartments, and uh, we've got a railroad track right there, so that would automatically 
qualify for transit village consideration. According to state law, you're allowed at least 25% bonus, density bonus. So if any of that comes through, and that is a minimum, and the range that I've seen varies from 25 to 100%. If there is going to be any equity in this fashion, the zoning characterization is no longer appropriate. <coughs> it is important to designate how much water we have available and at what point we are going to need to buy new facilities for sewer and for water. Since the sewer and water are now connected, if we have any inequities in the water distribution, we automatically have inequities in the sewer. Now, I did mention the, wa the mobile home parks. These are very, very water uh, efficient operations, probably the most in the entire county. I have reviewed uh, three mobile home parks with master meters at one point and found rates as low as 30, 50, and 60 gallons per day per unit. If you average out and assume that there's two residents, that gets really, real low. Now, under the plan you've got, most of these homes are in the four to six lot per acre designations. Your water factors go from if you have billed as few as four, you may have a 604 gallons per day per dwelling, and at the low end, 404 gallons per day. So who is getting the benefit of this extra water that's gonna be put aside? Who is gonna get uh, hit for increased sewer capacity? And how do you accommodate these variations in the future for uh, plans that are on the drawing boards but have not quite gotten permits yet and then will likely get permits in the near future. How do you modify things to be equitable if you start having huge amounts of bonuses? There must be some accommodation and the plan looks very, very skewed if the average homeowner is using 250 gallons per day, well, if you look at the lower densities of one to about uh, eight or 10, they are much higher than 250. So I would hope that uh, we modernize and use a more equitable means of determining how our water plan is to go forward and who pays for what. <coughs> Thank you for your comments. Moving right along, uh, we're going to go to the consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar will be voted upon by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or member of the public requests that a particular item be removed from the consent calendar, in which case uh, it will be considered separately under action items. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. <coughs> Moving right along to item 2.1. Chris, you want to come up and give us a brief presentation? Sure, thank you so much. Uh, as you all know, uh, we, uh, the board selected Kath and Associates to create a communication program, and Joe Charest was here with a workshop back in June and provided updates on materials, and a lot of them you've seen uh, through the sequences, the survey, the materials audit, key message platform, communication plan, style guide, the PowerPoint template. And then we get down towards where like the PowerPoint master presentation is. And they completed it and I was gonna bring it forward and have the board look at it and just talk to Dennis and really wanted myself and my staff to put some little tweaks in it, just little things that I wanted to have happen things that were very much, you know, kind of nitpicky and kind of difficult to have a consultant do where I want to move 
you know, images, scoot them to the borders, have names, <clears throat> like board members' names be on one line rather than two lines, just things like that. And uh, General Manager Lamb uh, accommodated me, and, and uh, we're going to make those edits ourselves, implement them, kind of take ownership of the uh, of the, the PowerPoint and uh, and bring it back and hopefully have a final that, that uh, every, everybody will be pleased with. Yes. And uh, so we, uh, it's gonna be brought back to us when? I'm good with bringing it back at the next meeting. I think we'll be done. Yeah, I think by meeting. the 16th. Yeah. But again, if what the board told me was you didn't wanna just have it and talk about it in the board meeting, you wanted the option to maybe have a workshop where you talk just it. Right. So we can send some dates out to do that after the 16th, something like that, if you prefer. I, we can just do that and schedule a workshop. I think a workshop to view it, talk about it, mm -hmm. it get you into the ahead of time. That's so why we wanted it. to get yeah. all the kinks out of it. We'll yes, get it to you perfect, ahead of time. Perfect. We'll have a workshop and we can sit down for an hour, or hour and a half, whatever, and just find our way through it. Perfect. Chris, is this just a, it's just, just a PowerPoint presentation or is it kind of a toolkit that has a bunch of different tools? That it has additional use? modules that can be inserted and there are slides that maybe one director might want to have given a presentation to this group and, and different slides that a, another director but may want to But they're remove. all slides, there's no other components like a... It's, it's essentially a PowerPoint okay. with uh, kind of a whole master and then modules that could be inserted into it and I just have these little touches that I just kind of go okay I, I, I want it like that but any of those items can be put into poster boards any kind of attachments handouts everything like that that was a whole intent depending on the audience you're talking to okay director Martin so why isn't cats and associates here tonight so so because I wasn't going to actually produce it because initially I was but then general manager Lamb and I talked about it and we decided I, I was going to implement my edits to it and then have the workshop. Yeah, they know they'll be there at that time. It's okay. I just noticed that they haven't been. Yeah, well, and it, it said work. that they were going to. So yeah. That's, what, like, that's like, my intent last week. But yeah. I think we'll all be happier. I'll be happier. Hopefully you'll be happier when, when I get to oh, I'm sure. put my yeah. slant on it, I guess. This is just an update. We don't just an update. We'll send some data to you to try to get a workshop that works for you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oh, I do have one speaker on this, though. Mr. Hunsaker, you want to yeah. come on up again? Yeah. Mike Hunsaker. Uh, I look forward to the workshop on the landscaping that's going to be given this Saturday. And I'm hoping you get a video and maybe post that. Mm -hmm on the uh, web, I'm just getting a nod, so <laughs> I assume that's the case. Um, I wanted to sing the praises of some of the VWD people and of the digital meters. Uh, I cut back in my water like everyone was supposed to and virtually turned off my landscaping. And I found a distinct drop in about uh, 20, 30 percent, but I anticipated that I would need that I should have gotten more. So I went out and looked at the new digital meters. And I hasten to point out these are not smart meters, of which I have no, don't want any truck with. Just digital meters are very easy to read. And I found to my surprise with everything turned off, I was, there was a very noticeable amount of leakage. I turned off the uh, water supply completely to the house and it continued <laughs> so uh, there was a question okay is there something wrong with the meter or something going on besides that and I asked uh, called up VWD and to my surprise within an hour I had a truck out there taking a look at it I amazingly surprised at the quickness of service we soon determined that the leak was downstream of the meter. The meter was apparently reading fine. And I saw a splotch of ground that looked a little different color and I thought maybe that would be it. So it, since it was downstream of the meter, then it was my responsibility to fix it. And what I found was that the leak was right by the meter. It was in an elbow 
going down from the meter down. And uh, apparently during the uh, installation of the meter, that joint gave way. As uh, far as I'm concerned, uh, this was a one inch pipe and you break the pipe if the joint is properly made. So I put it on myself and dug it out and replaced it, which turned out to be a bigger chore than I thought. Not because of, that's because of the house builder. But the digital meters are very easy to use. You don't need any special software. You don't need a computer. You can just turn off and identify these leaks easily and the VWD is there to help. And I would uh, tell people that uh, there, the VWD is helping us, not the typical bureaucracy that, like the DAV, DMV or something like that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Appreciate the positive wow. feedback. Wow. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would just like to thank the speaker. That's the first very positive thing I've heard him say. That's great. And, and the DMV did it. open. Huh? The, the city doesn't open. get that kind of treatment. We do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Michael. We'll, we'll move to uh, item number 2.2. .2. And this is on the South Lake lease agreement with the city of San Marcos. And this was put on the agenda at Director Hernandez's request. So I. Would you like to maybe take us off with a little background on that? Or would you like to turn oh, I, I, yes, by all means. Uh, pass this down the screen, if you will. So it, as Dennis said, if you're around long enough, uh, these bad pennies come back home. Thank you. And, and reading the report, I realized that um, on the, uh, not only the January 10th committee meeting, but on the January 9th in 2011, uh, I had just been appointed. I, I had almost no idea where South Lake was, and yeah. uh, uh, I didn't know what it did. I, I had heard some rumors that at some period back in history, it may have been used. It was one of our reservoirs, but uh, that's about all I knew about it. Um, and then fast forward as we've been talking about it, and, and as we have continually been educated and more education relative to our, our drought, uh, the, the possibilities of doing more reclaimed water, uh, <clears throat> indirect, potable, all the rest. South Lake is becoming a, a, a real asset to our community. And um, in, in, when this was brought up in, uh, in 2011, I didn't much understand or know that it had been brought up a number of times before. But understood as we have over these years come to understand that uh, you know it's coming back again, and uh, we've heard and seen a number of alternatives and what's post what possibly is going to happen, and um, what could happen. Uh, so um, my request to bring this forward is to um, seek a conditional extension. And uh, this has been brought about by uh, the many conferences we've been to and some of the reading I've been doing and was kind of brought again home last night at the DSAL presentation. Uh, pathetic turnout, which quite frankly I expected. I mean, uh, much like the rest of our ratepayers, they've got so many other things going on they expect the water to be coming out when they turn it on. They expect it to disappear when they go. And although they don't like it, they probably expect a bill every month. So one of the things that has been brought up in, in my reading is that the part of that is people just don't understand our water. They don't know where it's coming from. They don't know well, what we do with it. They don't get to see it or touch it. And the idea of using South Lake as, as this potential uh, opportunity for people to interact is magnificent. I applaud the bite Cheevers out of that. However, what I would like to do is expand that idea. And um, I know that the, the city has uh, been uh, uh, 
given as a mitigated measure for the Hanson property, 40 acres of property. I know we have Discovery Lake over there uh, by Discovery Hills because I've walked around it a gazillion times. Not nearly enough, but uh, I'm working on that too. And, um, and then there is potentially another property just below South Lake that uh, could be available if we you know, hit the lotto. But um, what I would like to propose is, uh, again, as I mentioned, a conditional approval of the extension based on us putting together uh, a, um, a committee, a joint task force committee with members of the engineering committee and our uh, district engineer, James Capel, and members from the city at whoever they should select to uh, get together and look at the possibility of what could be done at South Lake, at Discovery Lake, and potentially some of these other properties that could in fact contain additional lakes, much like, and you've heard me preach this in the past, much like what's being done out at Santee Lakes. And then understanding that it would be a conceptual master plan, it would um, uh, talk about, a, we could look at a feasibility study, some preliminary costs, a timeline and phasing, and then some possible uh, funding sources. We could bring it back on a monthly basis to report back uh, as to what we're doing, but take a larger vision of this so that we don't, and God love the city for, you know, I guess they got $70,000 from a grant, um, rather than spend that money and then ultimately have to destroy some of that or whatever, have them keep their money. But let's get a larger vision and then move forward with what we could do on a larger vision. Um, task force, in my conversations with others, shouldn't take more, I thought six months, people said better take it a year, but uh, at least have it so that we could develop this and then bring back a little better picture of what could be done. Be happy to uh, hear from any of the other board members or staff or anyone. <coughs> Dennis, you want to? Yeah, let me let me go back first? a little time again. Sorry, Director Martin. Okay. Um, because again, um, yeah, I was back here with Methuselah when we made some of these decisions. Um, South Lake was the primary water supply for the downtown area that served. Um, Pretty much south of 78, Twin Oaks, and then kind of east towards Barham, Mobile Home Park. What Over, years? What years are you talking? Well, uh, from 1968-ish, give or take, when it was built, that was part of the backbone system. So it was what we would call back then terminal storage. So we took water from our two connections, the only two we had back then. Whatever we took and we didn't use, that's where it went. That was our big floating reservoir. So that was 75 million gallons. So that was. I think it was 1981 was when the surface water tre treatment rule came into effect. And what it said was if you have a surface water body that you're selling for potable water supply, you have to have a treatment plant. You can no longer just go off surface water. That is what triggered from, again, from a historical pr perspective here to you, when we took North Twin Oaks open reservoirs that used to be north of the existing big tanks mm -hmm. and South Lake out of service. And we had to build, that's why we built Twin Oaks, because we lost 75 million gallons of storage, 10 days. We put it up top where we could get it everywhere. And South Lake has only been fed by rainwater since 19, I want to say late 1986. That's when we built Via Veracruz Tank, which is up behind uh, Discovery Hills, the big pipe that goes to it. So that's how South Lake came into existence. Um, so it was taken out of service from a portable standpoint in 86-ish. Uh, you've seen it go up and down. I think it was the 90, 89, 90, 91, 92 drought. It was almost at its lowest point ever. We're actually hoping that we stay dry for another month and the guy's fixing the valve can walk in there <laughs> and do it instead of swim. Um, on the other hand, it'll probably rain and it'll fill up like it did last time. Uh, so it purely gets surface runoff. The district does not have appropriate rights for surface runoff to that reservoir. Um, so that's, that's an issue that has to be dealt with sometime down the road. Um, so that's how that reservoir came into being. So I think it was in, when did we enter into the agreement? 2005. It was about a three or four year process when the board and the city first started talking about the mutual use of South Lake as part of the overall trail system 
for this for the city. That's what it is. I won't go into the details. You've got all the stuff in here. The different times we saw it, um, and then you know the last the last extension I believe is through December of this year. Uh, <coughs> the other part, <coughs> excuse me. The other part of this equation, you may recall, several months back, the consultant talked about we'd be doing a study and all the different options. So we've got that narrowed down. I think that'll be done the latter part of the year, maybe first of next year. That'll say, okay, if you want to do reclaim water, you've got to have this much storage or you look groundwater. If you want to do groundwater, you're going to spend this much money to go look and see what's really down there. If you want to do IPR, you're going to do this. Plus kind of the concept that was the favorite of the board was if we do anything, try to do it in a modular fashion. So if we develop South Lake and then we do something like this or we use South Lake in conjunction with Discovery, in conjunction with Lake San Marcos. That was one of the options. And we let's say we want to capture stormwater runoff just to get water supply, if nothing else, to help with storm flood control, first flush, put it up in the lake, release it during the year, and keep water in the creek to keep the creek from going bad. So all those options. So those are in process. I got to, I just got to work through it with the consultant, but it won't be till next year, first next year. And that would be a key piece that would have to play into something like this. Because what you got to remember is even though there's IPR, DPR, reclamation, it, like for reclamation, you got to have 90 days. So, so with Metalock, it's only 54 million gallons, which means I could only have a 600,000 gallon per day treatment plant if I was only relying on storage. That's why we have the ocean bell safe, so we don't have to worry about storage. So if you build something else, Mars only, uh, excuse me, South Lake's only 75 million full. So when you start looking about 90 days of wet weather storage, 50, 75 million gallons doesn't get you far. Um, so to have a couple of smaller lakes downstream, the practicality of those being enough for IPR DPR is pretty slim. They're just too small. <coughs> Whether or not it could be part of a feature to recover a groundwater, storm runoff, put it in there and have some kind of a feature, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Um, but whatever you look at, we've got to kind of look at it in conjunction with the other one that you told us to look at on, this, on the long term. It's separate from the master plan. Right. Yeah. You know, the IPR, DPR, that's all just a separate, okay, what could we do? Because that way you guys tell us where you want us to be in 15 years. That's what the plan of that is. So that's why it's separate from the master plan. So that's a little history on how South Lake came into being. Mm -hmm. Director Martin. Uh, a question, Dennis. Uh, and I've heard talk of the potential for a raise of that dam. Is that something possible, impossible, improbable, probable? It's a earthen field dam right now. Uh, you've seen the wet spot on it. It's kind of funny. It's been there since the day we bought it, uh, but it's never changed. So that's not an issue. Um, the, I think the most you could raise that thing, if you could even raise it, would be, I'm going to say, in the 7 to 10 foot range. Um, that's probably about the most you've got for any kind of an, you got to have an embankment. you, right. you got to put a dam into something. If you remember when you go up there, you got the big cutout. That's the overflow. you got a little bit of a high spot where they used to keep all the bees, and then it drives down. So that's kind of your controlling factor right there. Um, I don't know what that is like. I don't know if it's rock, if it's just dirt. If it's not bedrock, you wouldn't be able to use it. Uh, the odds of raising that without tearing down what's there and putting a complete new one, that's where I think you're going to go. I doubt, I've never heard of them allowing you to expand an earth and fill embankment. You would have to tear it down and build a whole new dam. Could it go higher? Probably a little bit, but it's going to depend on what that last little outcropping is made of. Can, can, I got a question. This can, can the lake? Just out of curiosity, can the lake be? Can we dig out the southern side of the lake further away from the dam to, to create more of a, a pond? We've got a really big pump station right down there. It's, okay. It doesn't show real okay. well in that picture. The so, South Lake San Leo pump station. You see the end of the yeah, road. See where it says Lake. But that's more of the the eastern side of the lake, isn't it? Uh, well, due north is going from the lake to the top of the paper. So if you want to go to the south, we don't own anything outside of that road roadway. Okay. Okay, so you could you could excavate you could excavate that and get some, but you're getting you know fingers on, yeah, like, so they're going uphill. <clears throat> they're going up. They could be expanded, but I don't know how much you'd get. Uh, another question. It's been a long time since I've actually walked that property, the Hanson property. Uh, they were open at the time, so it was a long time ago. But uh, Hanson loved that site because it was uh, rock. Yeah. Uh, they didn't stop. They, they stopped because it was they got out all the cheap rock. Mm -hmm. 
If they were digging down further, that's much more expensive rock. Mm -hmm. So what do you put as the possibility or potential of digging a leak in that rock? It won't be, and you've got to imagine, again, as you've always seen, water's got to go downhill. Okay. And so when you're going downhill, the downstream side has to be built up pretty high. So you'd be building a lake, and the lake would either be in the form of a really big round reservoir, or you'd have to somehow build a, um, a dam all the way across the middle there. And I just I don't know how that would function. We haven't looked at it. We haven't looked at it. But to get, I don't think you, my, my opinion of looking at it, I don't think you'd probably pick up any more storage than what you have already in South Lake at the most, at the absolute most. I, I don't know if you could. Because you figure, put it in perspective, the second Twin Oaks tank is 40 feet tall and as big as Qualcomm Stadium. So that would give you an idea to put it in perspective of what you're talking about plopping down right there, and that's only 40 million gallons. And I mean, again, so you're talking about, if you've been out to the horse ranch, you're talking about building a Qualcomm Stadium to guarantee wow. that kind of water. It's big, it's a big structure. Uh, and, and all things being equal, um, let's say you were able to build all the structure and you got the, would it help us with uh, that much in water runoff and uh, 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 street runoff, those kind of things? Because you'd be collecting everything you possibly could to fill it. Well, the problem is you're, you're off stream. <clears throat> right. Um, so, you know, you heard about how the impacts of reservoir storage when it's on a stream, you have issues. So what do we do? We build off stream storage. That way you don't impact environmental. So what would happen is you'd have to collect rainwater and stormwater downstream and then choose to pump it, pump it back all up. the way back to the top. That's part of the bigger study that we'd be looking at is why. What are you trying to do it for? It is really value. And does it pencil out at the end of the day? Yeah. That's, this is going to come down to, in all reality, every one of these options that we're going to look, bring to you, some will pencil out in 10 or 15 years when technology is here but some will never pencil out, and then the practicality and value of it is what the board's got to look at. But you're also going to be making decisions on things that don't exist right now, right. where you want us to go. That's the tricky part. Whether or not there's value to doing this, I don't know. Because even when we bring the study back on the IPR, DPR, reclamation, and groundwater, it's still at the 50,000 foot level. It's just going to tell you, if you want to do this, these are all the things you've got to look at. Here's a projected cost. If you want to do this, here's a projected cost if you want to do this. But again, we're, we're, off, we're not until January or so on that. And, and the reason I suggested this, this uh, conceptual idea is that so that we could ferret out some of these pieces of information and really find out if this was just a pipe dream or if there really is some value, even if it's not relative or, or uh, equitable or uh, equate to our storage or our stormwater, what does it do for our community in the advancement of knowledge about our water? People have to, the, the item that was cited was in, in Singapore where they're in deep trouble with water, but doing, doing a very good uh, method by which to <coughs> educate people is they had reservoirs, much like we have at Mar and over at uh, Olivenhine, all fenced off, almost armed guards. They took them all down that people touch the water, boating, picnicking, and the awareness of what water was all about and its use and how valuable a resource it is finally came to uh, understanding. And that is, I think, part of what the original idea was with regard to South Lake, allowing public access to it. That being the case, and, and those of us that have walked around Discovery Lake, uh, the, the, God love those kids because they'll find a way to get to the bottom, but it's it's circuitous. And with all the weeds and trees and everything, there's not really a very good accessibility to get around Discovery Lake except for the dock and some minor paths to the bottom. So those are the things that I wanted to, to pursue is see what kind of conceptual ideas could be accomplished. But, but if I had to ask you, Jim, <coughs> isn't that what the city is saying they're gonna do with South Lake? This is what the city is saying they're gonna be doing for 10 years. And well, I appreciate the money has to be right. What? The money has to be right. Uh, the, the, We're not going to do it. The water district's never going <clears> to <throat> build the park. That's part of the task force would be to find out where funding could be available. I mean, the city has been very beneficial in finding this, this grant for $70,000. There are other 
opportunities for funding that could be out there that I'm sure are out there. Now, whether we in fact uh, uh, qualify for them, I mean, Prop 1 has money for storage. I don't know that we would qualify, but there are potential other funding sources should we determine that this is something we ultimately want to do. So, and in conjunction with working with the city, perhaps they have funding sources. I, again, it's all conjecture. Until somebody sits down and begins to really get into it and ask these questions and get some real answers, it's what somebody said or what could happen or couldn't happen. And that's why the, the task force being employed. I got a couple comments too, but before we get back to you, what? Director Martin, do you have anything, Craig? You want well, to add I, or, yeah, or? I just wanted to, I, I think it's important to emphasize that until we hear some more detail about some of these options that we had tasked staff to look at previously, yeah. that, you know, it's... But right, and, and that was the point. I mean, we don't have to put this together today, right. but this was an opportunity with this lease extension for us to ask for something more than just another four years and a potential plan that may or may not get done. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I don't want them to spend their money for something that maybe if we looked at, looked at it in more detail, we would say, save the money and let's do something else. Yeah. So my question is, so everything we've already tasked Dennis to look at, he said he's going to have the answers within a year. I hope I'll first. Well, in first. Year. Year. So, so what? Okay, so what you're saying is you want to hold off until that time? No, when he comes back I would, with the answers. I would, I would, as I started with, conditionally approve the extension, but with the task force. I mean, they can be running simultaneously. We don't need to wait for one to begin or be brought to us before we start the other. It can be, and you know, here it is, the first of October. We're talking a couple of months. You know, if the task force were put together, you know, it'd be meeting or two to find out which, which way one wanted to go. So I, I don't think it's too early to begin to talk about this and the information that's going to be coming after the first of the year will only add to what could be accomplished at the task force. So I had a quick question. We had the luxury of having the city manager in the audience, and thanks for joining us. Um, I think this is probably, a, I think I know the answer to this question. Maybe you can just nod like this or come on up if you want to. But, uh, <laughs> does the city currently have any near or midterm plans for this location right from a recreational standpoint? Um, sure. Thank you, Mr. Vice President Board members. I'd be happy to sort of talk about where we're at. Um, and I, first to say thank you for your patience. I think. Our uh, board member uh, Hernandez is right, and as Dennis said, it started in 2005, and this park project got hung up in all sorts of uh, stuff that has nothing to do with you as an entity, but had everything to do with the city and with, uh, being a redevelopment agency and where we were getting the funding for mm -hmm. building the park. Um, and so we had to go through three years, literally, of, and Director Martin is fairly familiar with some of this stuff, um, of our world changed in terms of funding. Um, and how we had to then reshuffle the deck of, of funding for various projects. And so we've reshuffled the deck um, on this one and we think that now we're in a place where we can move a project forward. So let me just explain that project forward because my first concern was the same one that uh, Director Hernandez talked about is I don't want to spend money and have the lake change and then whatever I spent be underwater. Um, so our first phase of this are, and what we're looking to, to do um, sooner rather than later and we're designing right now is essentially to do work entirely upstream of the lake. So the city owns property that overlooks the lake. Um, so if you're driving up Twin Oaks Valley Road before you get to the uh, trailhead parking area at the top, there's actually a little gate um, and a driveway there where we would build essentially another parking facility there, similar to the trailhead parking. We would put a restroom up there. We would build an overlook with some nice, I don't want to say picnic shelters, but you know you kind of get that sort of a thing. That would have a really beautiful view of the lake. It would be looking down on the lake. I think we could incorporate some educational stuff as part of that. Um, it gets to the point that uh, Director Hernandez is talking about to help people understand how valuable that asset is and just water in general. And then it would connect to what's admittedly a fairly rugged trail um, that takes you down to the lake. And that would be the access point um, for people that would then park there and then could get down to, to the lake and then obviously would have a lease agreement in terms of the use. Um, we don't anticipate at, with this project improving that trail 
Um, I think that could come at some point, but we would rather not spend any money and a whole lot of time while these other things are sort of up in the air and then see where all those, those balls sort of settle. Um, and then um, if we can find some funding, and that's an if, um, if we can find some funding and the lake is sort of fixed where it's at and we want to develop right around the lake, we would then start to try to figure out how to do that. So um, nothing that we would be doing would be affected by anything that happens at the lake. So I'm not, at this point, I'm not worried about spending money and then having wasted that money. Um, but I can tell you that it's, it's, been, um, it's been directed to me as a city manager by the folks I work for that getting public access to that is a priority. Um, and so we're, we think we're ready and so we would appreciate uh, your uh, extension of the lease. It does expire at the end of this year. So whether you do that today or in a future meeting, um, that's really all we're trying to do. And, and we know we've asked for that in the past and then not come forward and deliver the project. Um, I've provided Dennis with, it's in our capital budget now. Um, we have $750,000 for construction identified, set aside. We're actually briefing the council about moving that forward a year because we have it in 17, 18, and we're talking about moving that forward to 16, 17 um, because we, we want to get this thing done and, and opened up because it's a huge community amenity that sort of sits there um, unused. Um, so that's where we're at. I'd be happy to try answering questions. Director Martin. Um, so the $750,000 doesn't go a long way. Uh, uh, it builds the parking lot. I was going to say it builds the parking lot. And, and then what would be your timeline for phase two? That's a, that's a good question. I think that timeline depends on if when all the, whatever the variables that about the lake itself are resolved, um, then um, we could say, okay, let's start to design what we would do at the lake. Is it at a fishing pier? Is it in, you know, improve the trail network around the lake? Um, so I, I think then we would start to master plan that out, um, but we would have to figure out where the funding would come to actually build that, and I don't have that answer for you tonight. So your plan would be that you and Dennis would work that out yeah. between, between us. So if there was some sure. changes, if we came up with this sudden way of saving three million gallons a day, you'd be interested in making that change as well. We, we're partners on this one, yeah, we absolutely yeah, work. If I might on that, Jack, Jack just beat me to the point that the last uh, part that the board approved is upstream and higher than anything we might do at the lake or below the lake. Mm -hmm. The biggest trip we had, you remember the very first scheme, it was gonna be a pretty nice park. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, you know, as, as he indicated, they lost the redevelopment funds and that was a lot of funding, but they were improving the trail all the way around. They had the uh, porta potties that burned the waste to ash, you know, around. They had docks, we had the concession stand mm -hmm. provision in there. Well, the tricky part is, what was the water level? because we retained the right in the agreement to put reclaimed water in there. So we kept that in the agreement, so we have that right. So that was our biggest concern, was how do we maintain a level when we don't even know what we're doing in the future. So when they had all the stuff down around the lake, that really locked in what we could or couldn't do. That's kind of now gone by the wayside. So everything is upstream. Is, is it the old Hafner property? Yeah. yeah, it's Arnie's old property, which is to the s south of the lake and higher. Right. So anything that we do with Arnie's property, it's not gonna harm our downstream options. Uh, Jack and I have talked about this from probably four or five months and I've mentioned it from the first time you brought it up to, to Hernando. So it's on the drawing board, we're aware of it, we're looking at it. The one thing I will say is downstream, there's environmental habitat. So there's some constraints, some areas down mm -hmm. there. Yeah. But again, <clears throat> what we're looking at coming back to the first year, I don't think is gonna harm long-term with the lease or what they're doing right now. I, I think we can work together on that. I don't see it wrong with let, let me ask Jack this question. Would, would this conceptual task force, this task force, impede anything you're planning on doing? Well, I don't know that it would, imp I mean, I, I don't know that it would impede anything. Um, you know, we have a project that's entitled uh, there for 346 dwelling units. They're actually back in the forest <coughs> to amend their spa. Pretty minor amendment. It doesn't change the density or whatever. Um, so their property's locked in. Yep. Um, right. They're, the environmentally sensitive properties, which on your map are sort of everything that's dark, you know, that's kind of locked in. And, and <laughs> yeah. what you'd be allowed to touch um, there, I think, is, is I don't want to say impossible, but, but it seems like it would be awfully difficult. We do have a park site that that developer agreed to uh, provide to the city. It's about 30 acres. Um, the, the, the vision for that park is it's our, it's our last chance as a city to create a, another major recreational, when I say recreational sports field complex, because we're just never gonna get another piece of property that size, especially central in town. 
Um, so um, to take a significant piece of that away, I mean, we're, I know, we're, we're years away, we're probably decades away from building that park. Um, but, um, you know, the, 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 the whole point of getting that property was to have an option long term in the future in the center of town to create a, an active recreational spot because there's just not going to be any land available that's flat um, and, and, and able to do that. So I, I, I don't want to say it would impede us, but um, I think um, park funding is a huge challenge for this city right now. Um, it spent a lot of its money uh, on parks, and so our park fund is in significant deficit. If you look at our budget, it's pretty obvious that we have a, we've overspent for parks. Um, so I would be not representing the truth if I were to come here and tell you that say, yeah, we've got a lot of money we can put towards parks uh, in the future or towards what the kind of thing you're talking about. It's just uh, not that. Understandably, and that, that, that really was <coughs> why this was just a conceptual idea, so that if in fact, as I said, we hit the lotto, we would have an idea of where we could go with that. And, and, and I guess that, that's, I'm, I'm looking at a long-term vision, obviously, and, uh, and, and having what is being planned pre presently fit into that such that, so if we did hit the lotto, we would go, gee, look at this. We could do this, that, or the other with the uh, uh, creation of more activity possibilities at Discovery Lake, whether we can put a lake anywhere else that we can research that. I mean, Director Martin is on the side has told me, you know, all this rock that's there, how you can do it. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. That's what we'd like to find out. That's what I'd like to find out. So that I could then address his question and say, yeah, some there, but it's not a lot there. So that's the reason why I was seeking this task force, to get some of these answers that have been floating around, that I've floated around, you know, whether, I mean, maybe this is a pipe dream and it just is not possible, let's move on. But until sure. we actually sit down and look at it, then it's going to be something that we don't have a definitive answer to. If I might add to that, right now, the way the contract is structured with the city is they can't build anything unless you approve it. Right. Um, so what you have approved, is what the city manager is talking about building, yeah. uh, which is all he has money for. And that's if you look at his five year budget, that's on page I saw it. whatever that is <clears throat> of our budget. Sorry, oh, page about the 27. Font. Sorry about the font size. Oh, <laughs> just ours is too small. <laughs> page 27. So he's got these uh, 71,000 this year to do your design. Mm -hmm. And then he's got the money out two years from now, but hopefully we'll move it forward. So, from the perspective of the district retaining control of what happens to the lake right around the lake, the trails and downstream, you guys still have that. You have not given any of that away yet. The only piece you've currently approved is upstream. Right. So it can't harm moving forward with uh, anything that we do. So the opinion, my opinion, it would be at the least extension wouldn't harm us because they don't have authority to build anything beyond what you've already approved. They don't have the money to build it. And what they do have the money to build is upstream and it won't harm you. No, and I yeah. understood that. That's why I said the, the approval what I would like to have attached is this task force so that the city's group and our group could get together to look at some of these other variables. That's, that was the connection. Sure. I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I, I agree, I don't like Jack said, we're in this together. Yeah, I think, I exactly. think we can work through that. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of hard to put a task force on him that he doesn't have not talked to his council yet, and I'm not sure what their well, plans would be. we got two months to do that, so you know, we yeah. could send them back to ask that. And if I can just add it, I mean, task force is kind of strong language. Would it just be okay to maybe just have an initial meeting to see if it goes anywhere from there? Just maybe get their engineering group together with our engineers and just to have that kind of just, let's get our heads together and just kind of take a real high level look at it first and then we can decide if we want to actually go to, I mean, I think you hear with task force, you start thinking getting members of the community involved. No, no, absolutely not. That's why I identified who the participants would be, the people who are involved in this. And yeah, we could have a committee a meeting with the, the group, but I don't think it would be accomplishing anything more than we're talking about the what ifs and the what coulds. What I would like to see happen is taking that and then drilling down further into geology, feasibility, funding, you know, where this all could happen, whether it's just South Lake or if it's Discovery Lake and anything else, 
those are the other questions and the reason I called it a task force is that's a confined time frame group so that we could then report back to both the city and the district as to what we have really found out and then we could then decide what to do. Dr. Martin. I think your task force is a good idea, Jim, and I think we have two people already on it. Our general manager and the city manager are the task force, and they have their staff already working on it. We're not involving anybody from the general public. They're already working on it. They know, you know what the city needs. They know what the water district needs. Uh, they're very much confined in their thought, and we also have a study, not back yet, that we authorized for $100,000 last year. So we already have one study out there. So I don't want to see a task force come up and say, we need another study. Well, we don't get this first study back before we do another study. Uh, but I think we have a task force right in front of us. I, I would absolutely disagree. You have a city manager who has a recreation department who has put together a plan for now we find up above the lake. We have our staff who I can't believe has done anything more than perhaps review their plan. But that is not a task force. That is not a group that is going into some of the details about what could be done to enhance South Lake and or any other body of water in our community. There is nobody doing that. Okay, so who are you suggesting be on this task force? We're gonna hire consultants? No. Oh, I, the last, so the last thing have, I said. Who do we have in our community wiser than the city manager and the general manager? All the people that work for him, including us. But we already had that. No, we already yes, have that. but they have not been directed to look at those finer points. That's my point. The, well, if we yeah. ask them to, I'm sure they will. What? If we why ask would them they? to, I'm sure they will. Why, 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 would they be, why would they direct anyone to look at potential other uh, enhancements to South Lake and Discovery Lake or any other lake? unless they were directed to do so. And no one has directed them to do so. Because I think in the last few years, with changes that have occurred, our city manager, our, our general manager and our city manager get along. I think they go to monthly, they talk to each other. They know what's good for the community. The city manager knows what's good for his community. General manager knows what's good for his community and water. They're, they're the two most intelligent people on the subject. Yes, they have people that work for them. And if they know the direction we're looking at, they're looking to doing that. Okay. I've always found it. If I, can, if I can jump in for a second and um, maybe take this in a little bit different direction. First off, I just wanted to start off by saying, uh, you know, Jim, I've, I've heard you talk about this vision and um, I think you're, you are dreaming big and, and, and that's what I really appreciate. I, I don't know, I have no idea if it's feasible, if it's possible, um, but I love the idea and I think it would not only uh, be a great source of of uh, additional water storage, regardless if that's recycled water or, or otherwise. Um, I think it would be a great community asset if we could ever pull something like this off. Um, so I appreciate you dreaming big. Um, as far as tonight's action, this is, you know, we can go two ways. We could either end this conversation and try to bring it back later, or we, you can make a motion and have this conditionally um, uh, approved. But I would need to know a little bit more detail as what those conditions that you're thinking I know you're talking about a task force, but again, if you can maybe clarify what exactly that task force, will, who that will consist of, what you expect from them, and then if I can maybe get some feedback as to what his comments on that are, is what this might cost us, if there's gonna be a cost other than just staff time, um, because he's talking about you know, some, some testing of the ground, it sounds no, like. Wait, okay, let so, me, so, let me yeah, answer, you let me answer your question. Thank so, you. My idea of this task force would include the engineering committee, and I and mentioned uh, our district engineer, James Capel. That's the three. From the city side, I would expect that they would be uh, the uh, head of the Department of Park and Recs and one of the other individuals from Park and Recs and one of their engineers. That group of six would get together and determine to create a conceptual master plan, I'm talking bubble <coughs> diagram, a feasibility study as to and this information relative to the raising of the dam or the expansion of uh, uh, Discovery Lake with regard to the environmental problems <coughs> the, that may be in between it. Um, 
a preliminary cost estimate and what all that is and a preliminary timeline with phrasing, phasing and where possible funding sources could be identified and with no cost to either the city or the district unless it was brought back to the board and or the city council as to a study that may want to be done. But at this task force level, there would be no cost involved from either the city or the district. This would be, except staff time, obviously. Would you agree with that, Dennis? Based on, I mean, I hear feasibility studies. I mean, these are things that we pay for all the time, right? Well, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, let me back up. You've actually got three options here. You can table this, bring them back. You can have, somebody can make a motion, see if it passes. And then somebody can make an alternate motion, see if it passes. Uh, if none of that happens, then the request is DOA, um, which I don't think we want to do. Um, the, the, you, can, you can sit down with the task force. Let's not call it a task force. Let's call it a working group. Task force, you're going to get yourself in trouble, and the public's going to be suddenly, why are you having a task force? There's nobody from the public on it. Um, you're looking, you're, you're at the, we're doing the study for the concept stuff at the 50,000 foot level. You're up at the 100,000 foot this right now you've got a, a development that's two developments I believe two pieces of property that are already entitled in that area and then you've got an environmental corridor through the middle um, again to, to the question director Martin asked what we would build in there you'd be trying to fit Qualcomm in there to get anything of any value now geologic studies to even look at raising the dam doing an analysis I, I'm assuming you're not even close to talking about that level now um, so, you know, if, if, if there's no holes drilled in the ground, cost studies are going to be, boy, wild pie in the sky at best. Um, you're going to have staff time, cost. So we've got to allocate that cost somewhere. So, it, it, yeah, it's, it's in your budget because you have a budget for the year for all of us, but you are going to burn up resources doing it. I can't speak for the city manager on that, on his uh, happy factor on this or not. Um, I, I'm not sure what we get, I get what you've told us, Director Nanas, which is why, because of you pushing this, we're doing the other study. So I think you will get the information out of that other study as to all these things, because that's what the board's told us. Where do you want us to be? Excuse me, I backed up and said, where do you want us to be in 15, 20 years? That's up to the board. You guys give us direction, we tell you how to get there. So that's the study I'm gonna bring back. Um, it'll give you preliminary costs, it'll give you things like that, and alternatives are raising the dam and things like that. Um, I, I think you're going to have two groups going at the same destination, to be perfectly honest. I think what we'll be pulling together is going to give the alternative. To see whether or not it'll fit right in that small corridor, I don't know. You're going you're gonna to have to put a lot of time and money and effort into it from the staff standpoint. Uh, we can't just draw a line and say, let's build it here. It's going to take some work. I don't know. I and, and before we got too far even down there, I would be, I would like to see some some more detailed maps. I, I know you put these together for us. I appreciate that, but um, I'd like to see if we were kind of more specifically if we were going to do a lake two or three, where exactly those, that might fit in best. Where's this future development that's coming in? Where's the future recreational? Because I, I I have some I have a ballpark idea as I yeah. look at this, but not I'd like to actually see it. Kind of this is there, this is there. So yeah. I can more, better visualize Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and that's yeah, we, what we, would we begin with? Because you're right. I mean, this is a Google map that I did yeah. four circles around. Yeah, I didn't provide any information because, like I said, this is yeah. requested by Director Hernandez. No, it, it, we do have detailed layouts of the proposed subdivisions where the open space easements are. We've got all that. So I can bring so, that back to the next board meeting. And doing some uh, work group, whatever you want to call it, someone, some group, to take that information and provide more detail is what I'd like to see happen. Because it's not going to happen unless we direct it to happen. That's that's the point. When we get the, uh, the plan that's coming the first of the year, it's going to be very conceptual from that 50,000 feet, but you're not going to know any more about these lakes no. from that report than you have in front of you right now. That's, that's correct. That's why I would like to spend or ask for a group to get some more information so that when we get this uh, report after the first year, we can see if it fits together or not. If it doesn't fit together, 
Done. Next. Move on. Let's find something else to talk about. Director Mark. So let me ask a question. What's on our docket tonight is the lease agreement. From my understanding from our general manager uh, and from the city manager, uh, if we approve this, it doesn't change anything that we can do or not do in the future. That's right. What you're trying to do is force an addendum on it to force them to work together by putting together this working group. I thought this was is the absolute opportunity for that to happen. Yes. And that could happen at any time. It could happen at any time. You don't need to hold the lease agreement as a hostage. I, I don't think it's good faith showing by saying we're holding the lease agreement as a hostage. Well, quite frankly, after 10 years, I said yes, it was. Because, and I appreciate now they have a plan, but we have heard that four times before. And, and with all due respect to the city, I, and I, it looks like this is more real than the other three times, but we have heard this a number of times. And so I thought, oh good, let's approve the extension, but let's find out if we can get some more information about the areas around <coughs> the, the, the two existing lakes and what could be done <coughs> on the other. That was the reason. But, but that's I the, said from the beginning, I want to approve the extension. Okay. But that being said, I move to approve the extension of South Lake. I'll second that. Okay. Do we need a roll call for that? Or is it a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. And what I will do on that note is I will get the board all of the detailed information on the maps and all that kind of stuff. If nothing else, I'll bring it back to the next board meeting, just an information item, so you can see what we have done today. And then if I can just add on for uh, Director Hernandez's sake, just thank you for bringing this, but I think at least I know I'm interested in learning more about this, obviously Director Hernandez is, um, and from prior conversations that the board's had up here, um, others I'm sure have, are interested in learning a little bit more about this, but do you have a little consensus from us that we would like you guys to maybe look at this and see I what you think, guys can bring to I think to we us? are on the same page, no problem. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to be forceful on this. I, I got you. I, I will be talking to you about what we are going to see and when we are going to see it. Because, as I say, 10 years in the making and that taking place is great, but I'd like to get some answers so we could all look at the development, the extended development of at least these two lakes and I've been bugging my ear has asked us to look at uh, Jack's Pond as well. So uh, the same thing. Yeah. Jack's mud hole. Yeah, Jack, Jack's mud hole. Yeah. No, uh, direct. I, I, I would. I would just like to say I really want to thank the city manager for coming tonight, and I really want to thank the city for moving ahead and making it a public open space, which we would never do. But but and before the city moves ahead, what's your time frame on this, sir? Yeah, <laughs> we'll <laughs> So the time we're designing right now, um, and actually I'll leave some of the designs with Dennis and he can share those with you. Um, like I said, we, we, we put the budget together, we programmed the construction money for fiscal year 17, 18, but we're actually briefed council last month saying that uh, assuming all this comes together and the design's gone well, uh, we wanna get out the bid sooner. We think the pricing will be better sooner rather than later, and this money can be moved. It's redevelopment money, so we have to go through the Department of Finance to shift it from one cycle to the next cycle or a previous cycle. Um, but our goal is to put the money into construction starting our next fiscal year, which starts July 1st of 16. So that's our So, so you're going to be designing, you're designing, We're designing now, right now. Yeah. And hopefully some kind of beginning yeah. I mean, third quarter of next year. Yeah, yeah that's, that's and you'll invite entirely And you'll invite us to the ribbon cutting. Absolutely. We'll push you all in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Go down that trail. The lake's down there. Somewhere. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't <laughs> we walk down the trail. Do we? I appreciate the discussion. I, you know, I think we can have those conversations, and certainly the city council appreciates you guys approving that so that we can move forward. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. We're good to go. And we get your point, Director Names. All right. Got you loud and clear. How do you really feel? I feel good. <laughs> I'm going to be up his nose for the next two months, but I feel great. Well, that ends our action item, so we'll move on to uh, reports of 3.1. Uh, I'll actually confine else? mine to closed session. We do have uh, Mr. Myers here for <clears throat> closed session. Okay. Jeff? And I just, uh, I just wanted to know, is, is there, are there any fish in the lake? And maybe I could get a little boat rental concession going over there or something. Like I, that. I had heard they were going to make this uh, Shamu's Winter Haven. They were going to move Shamu in it every winter. There are gigantic fish. There are some. I, oh, there are. See, I think that's the reason there's, for the, for the, the foot dragging. There's some massive fish in there. Yeah. 
don't get that word out there. No, we don't. Uh, it's no. already out there. So crawling yeah, I, ha fence I hate to say it base. because it is recorded, but we finally put a gate up because it was cheaper for us to replace the locks <laughs> than it was to keep fixing the fence. Yes. So we just put a gate up so they can cut the lock and go in. On Saturdays and Sundays, the lock cutting uh, concession is the one to have out there. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, as they walk by, yes. the fish. Thank you, out. Jack. Oh, thanks, Jack. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll else? confine my full session too. Okay. And uh, with uh, President Evans being absent, there won't be a water authority. Uh, what about two point three? Oh, we, we pulled that. We, oh, we pulled it. Okay. Anything, uh, gentlemen from Encina? Uh, I want to go first. There, there was no policy in finance committee meeting since the last, since our last board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't had a board. Yeah, we need it. Okay. Directors' reports on meeting, conferences, seminars. Yes, well, it's been a busy month. Uh, the uh, reuse uh, conference in Seattle, uh, well attended, uh, great information. Uh, everything, everything, everything is pointing to indirect and direct potable. Get on board with it, get ready for it. It's coming to a tap near you. Um, and uh, that was a short version of that. Uh, and then we went to Monterey. And uh, one of the uh, uh, interesting uh, breakout sessions that I attended was uh, a, a new push and some new legislation that has uh, lowered the bar for design build to the million dollar level and water districts, wastewater are mm -hmm. included in that. So uh, I, mm -hmm. it's very interesting to hear yeah. the developer side of this and the professional side. Professionals are a little bit, uh, what's the right term, sensitive, because they're fearful that now they're going to be controlled by developers as opposed to districts or agencies. And unless you're very careful with your design build programs, the classic is they did a design build at uh, one of the uh, the schools here in the school district, and uh, the superintendent walked in and said, what, what kind of ceiling is this? He said, well, this is the ceiling we put in. Well, we didn't want that. You didn't say you wanted it, and we put in a ceiling. You wanted a ceiling? You got a ceiling. You want a different ceiling? It's gonna cost you more. So the preliminary documents or any kind of design <coughs> building are essential, and to the point where they have identified that it's best to employ a professional to put together what they call the qualifying documents so that when you, in fact, go into design build, you do know what you're going to get. And there's no question. So that, that was a, was a toss-up. And I, I'm, after the fact, uh, the security one was probably a better <laughs> seminar, but this was very important, too. Yeah, I attended the CSD annual conference as well. I attended uh, several uh, different sessions. Uh, I found the one on peak GM, general manager performance, to be very timely since our general manager was named CSD general manager of the year. So it was good to see what they thought was a good general manager in the different surveys <laughs> was in line with what I think a good general manager is. So, it was good. Um, that I also attended uh, some, a very good session on uh, public outreach and communications. I thought that was one of the highlights, too. So. Okay. Mark? I thought a report, a report on all of them, except for uh, last night's. Last night we had a desalinization workshop here, very well attended by staff <laughs> uh, and board, uh, but not very many people. And uh, there has to be a way to get the word out. Uh, what we heard from people were, it was written on the bill in the same language that you use on the bill, so nobody even read it. You know, I mean, that, that wasn't highlighted. It wasn't like it was on the envelope. Uh, what do you call that? Sniped. Yeah, it wasn't like it was sniped to let people know, which I think could be a use for November. Um, uh, very educational. Uh, we made some observations afterwards that I hope uh, 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 Chris and James took to heart and make some serious changes in the presentation because people get lost when we explain too much engineering to oh, them. Yeah. And uh, as it happened here at, at ours, and the first thing I noticed was an area in town, I go, well, they don't get any desal water. And of course, 
last night when the gentleman brought up, yeah, I'm not getting any, so why are my water rates going up? It's what, do you want to cross that bridge? Don't even talk about it. Yeah. It's a blend. You know, it's same as people think they get their water from Imperial Valley. Yeah, we get water, but it's not your water. Yeah. I mean, but so it's a blend. I mean, I think that's what we need to push is a blend and not, I know some of it is a superiority complex because we're getting more than anybody else, but, but it's just not practical to tell people that because they don't comprehend it. They don't understand it, and they don't want to. They just well, you know, I can if I'm paying more, I better be getting desal water. Yeah. Well, they realize if they drank desal water straight from the desalinization plant before, they dehydrate because it would suck all the salts out of which I learned last night. So it's just very interesting. So you get into the weeds with people; it's a blend. Okay. You know, we'll just level. just a thought. Yeah, uh, yeah, although I love that graphic that they put together, the three-dimensional graphic, people don't get it. And they're looking at that, and they're looking at their house on their street, and how much are they going to get in D Yeah. So okay. just well, a thought. Yeah, as far as getting people, I mean, you know, we, we one of the guys was from Valley Center. Yeah. Yes. He heard about it. We had it in the newspaper. We did two press releases. It was in the quail call. The people in Lake San Marcos read the quail call front to back. I heard it didn't make the quail call. Oh, it was in the quail call. Was it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, it was, I mean, we advertised that as much as we could. I hate to say it, but that goes to show... Uh, apathy. People trust. The apathy. Well, they no, trust. It goes back to what Director Hernandez said at the beginning, is you turn and push. We'll, we'll, try, we'll try to reach out more and see what we can do, but yeah, it's, but it's tough to get them here. Towards that end, um, we, we might look at, and uh, Director Sonell and I mentioned this earlier together, perhaps we should take it to some of these things. Uh, Rotary, Kiwanis, Homeowner Associations, and I guess the reason for this is <clears throat> we're pre previewing what's coming. That's the purpose of this. Sure. So we may have to. We already, there a little we, already, more. we already took it to Rotary. Yeah, James. Yeah, yeah. Oh. he did that. He he did it to another group of electrical engineers that brought okay. us out, and we've done it to a, a party with Mike at a, at a different group. We've been getting out there, Jim. I mean, it's just, how do you get somebody excited about, you hey, you, up, you've got another uh, 10 million gallons them, of water coming. I think the last thing is you got to have food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had food last night. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there, there is apathy, but I think there's also people, they don't really want to admit it, do have a trust in government in certain aspects. And they're trusting their water. Of course, one of the people we talked to last night, he only drinks bottled water. He only <laughs> uses our water for, for his plants. But so that's interesting. A lot of people do that. Yeah. Uh, but I think people do have trust in government agencies that you're not going to put bad water in their tap. Well, you mean, if you recall from the survey, we had 78% that found the service we provide was favorable. And so, I mean, that was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, we'll work at getting yeah. more people here. Any other things? Is it 83? That's all I had. No, no. Okay. I haven't gone to any uh, conferences or, or uh, events other than last night's uh, workshop that we had. And a, a big thanks to the staff for putting that on it. And it was probably a lot of work. And I'm fortunate that we didn't get a lot of, uh, a lot of people from the community out to go to it. But hopefully, if we just keep uh, you know, all of us as well as we're out and about in town, get the word out there and um, push it out on social media and any other outlets that we can, uh, hopefully, we'll get it few more people next time so but I'm glad that we had it um, that ends the reports and I have a note here that says if you're going to attend the uh, the Kawa breakfast on the 20th let I end know I think that everybody's going right yep yep, yep. and then a uh, 5.1 uh, director's comments I yep. I don't have any future uh, agenda items but um, just a reminder that uh, um, tomorrow the San Diego North EDC meeting has been moved to the Holiday Inn, and the, one of the two primary speakers is going to be Jenny Wendell, who is now with the Port of San Diego, but she used to be the public relations manager for the city of San Marcos. So we have a local, right. local celebrity coming. Uh, and I did ask uh, the last meeting I was at to have us uh, bring back and take a look at the ordinance relative to our annexation next board meeting. That? next board meeting thank you right. any other comments future agenda items okay get a motion in a second to go into closed session move to go into closed session second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. five minute break
Sure. Motion passes. Thank you.